How's it going, Smashers? My name is Bonk, and in this video, we'll be showing you how you can react faster in Smash Ultimate. If you need help with your reaction time or just getting better at the game in general, feel free to check us out over at ProGuides.com. ProGuides.com is the number one platform for 24-7 live coaching where you can learn directly from the pros. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. First, we need to establish a baseline for what reaction time generally looks like. The average visual reaction time is around 200 milliseconds, or approximately 12 frames. The average auditory reaction time is just over 7 frames, but there's a lot to talk about, so we'll just be covering visual reaction time for simplicity's sake. Next, we have to factor in the native input delay. Smash Ultimate has an additional built-in 6 frames of input delay. This pushes your reaction time by 6 frames, leaving you at a nice round 18 frames on average. So, that's all there is to it? If it's 18 frames or slower, we can react to it? Not in your wildest dreams, pal. We live in the real world with real technology that has real limitations, and this will have a noticeable impact on your reaction time. Between your monitor's response time, the time it takes for you to move your finger to a button and to then push down that button, only for the controller to take additional time to send that signal to the game, you have to add at least another 2 frames, if we're being generous. So that makes a solid 20 frames of reaction time. Okay, that has to be everything, right? Not even close. 12 frames is only the average for simple reaction time. In layman's terms, simple reactions are reactions where you don't have to make any decisions. You perceive a stimulus and you immediately act. This is all well and good when there's only one thing you have to react to, but what if you have to consider multiple options? That's where choice reaction comes into play. Choice reactions are reactions where you are reacting not only to the fact that a stimulus has occurred, but also what occurred so that you can respond accordingly. On the low end, this decision may add no less than an additional 100 milliseconds, or 6 frames, to your reaction time. In Smash, either player will have a multitude of options at their disposal in any given situation, which means that simple reactions are almost never a possibility. This brings our reaction time up to about 26 frames on average, which is simply not enough to do anything with. But if that's the case, then how do all of the top players appear to react so seamlessly? It's a little thing we in the industry like to call anticipation. There are a couple of things that make up anticipation. First, it's important to understand that you as a human can only focus on so many things at one time. This applies to practically everyone. You, me, and all of your favorite pro players have the same amount of mental space, so to speak. Through being sufficiently aware of your opponent's options, you can identify which ones are the most important to react to and prioritize reacting to those options. This is known as the mental stack. When you know what you're reacting to, you react to that thing faster. You won't react to other things as quickly, but there are ways to work around this by utilizing the prioritization of your mental stack. While you wait to react to one option, you can pick a safe, non-committal way to cover one or more other options. This prioritization of options in your mental stack is the basis for anticipation, and is how pro players are able to react so well at the top level. They aren't reacting faster than you, they're just more aware of the options available to the opponent and better at prioritizing the most important ones. That's a lot to take in, so to really tie everything together, we're gonna take a look at some pro gameplay. For these examples, we'll be using some games from the set played between Mars and Light at Let's Make Big Moves. First, let's take a look at something that occurs in Game 5 of the set. Here, Light sends Mars into tumble with a landing down air, forcing a tech situation. He runs up to where Mars will be, prepared to cover a tech in place or a tech roll away. He sees the tech roll in, which he had actually not been anticipating, and only begins to run towards Mars over 27 frames into the animation. He had most likely been anticipating a tech in place or tech roll away, looking for a hard punish to make progress on his comeback. This isn't exactly an example of anticipation, but it's an example of a raw reaction, just to show that the numbers line up. Here, in game 1 of the set, Light hits a neutral air while landing, sending Mars into tumble. 
He runs to where Mars would end up after taking the knockback from the neutral air and waits. At the top of his mental stack here is most likely a directional air dodge. The startup on Zero Suit's aerials isn't exceptionally fast, and most likely held a very low priority in making this decision. Landing with a neutral air dodge is an especially common option, and most likely what he was aiming to cover with this positioning. He sees the directional air dodge, and 19 frames into the animation, dashes into an up smash, punishing the directional air dodge. In game 2 of the set, this particular sequence showcases the concept very well. Mars begins by forward throwing light, putting him into a tech situation. He runs up to where he would land after the throw to cover tech in place and potentially tech roll away. The option he anticipates here is tech roll in, and he reacts to it with a turnaround grab only 21 frames after the animation had begun. He forward throws light again, this time running into him for nearly the entire duration of his tech in place animation. He was most likely anticipating a tech roll away, but there is a small possibility that tech roll in was anticipated as well. It's hard to say conclusively, as neither of those two options were picked for us to see his response to them, but his response to the tech in place is clearly one of safe coverage. Mars flickers his shield as soon as he realizes the tech roll didn't occur and buffers a jab. Light mashes down tilt on wake up and gets parried by the shield flicker into a jab. Buffering jab is necessary as Mars wouldn't have been able to react to whether the parry succeeded or not and has the added benefit of covering spot dodge as well. We could go on as there are countless examples of anticipation out there, but hopefully you get the gist of it. Now to recap what we went over. Raw reactions are incredibly slow. Reacting to an option without anticipating it gives you an average reaction time of around 26 frames at best. This is because choice reaction, in addition to various minor delays caused by hardware, will severely impact your reaction time when compared to your pure, unaltered, simple reactions. By knowing what options are available to the opponent, you can prioritize and anticipate a specific option to react to that option faster, safely covering other options while you look for it. It should go without saying that just being aware of this isn't immediately going to make you better. Like anything else, it's a skill that you need to develop through practice and experience. Get out there, give it your all, and the returns you see will directly reflect what you put into it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, Smashers. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified when we upload new videos. That's all, and we'll see you guys in the next video.